Hey, what's up, John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I thought I'd do a video today about, or answer a question about finding your programming niche. This is something that I've talked about quite a bit uh, as, as far as specialization and stuff. If you have seen some of my videos, you can check out a playlist on specialization that may help you out. And I know this is one of the big things that I get a lot of questions from people on. Also, you can of course check out my How to Mark Yourself as a Software Developer course. That course can help you to create your own brand, to specialize, to niche down, to all these things and it'll explain to you also why it's so valuable. I'm not going to cover why it's so valuable so much here in this video, but uh, before I get into that, I do want to take a second to uh, thank Hired.com uh, for, for being a sponsor for Simple Programmer. They've come on as a sponsor. Uh, I've been working with Hired in the past, uh, you know, have, have, uh, have talked to them a few times, and, uh, and they're offering kind of a special for, for all of you. Uh, they're really cool because it's a totally different way to get a job, right? So instead of you applying for jobs and you know, going through all these resumes, it, it sort of flips it uh, backwards. So you fill out some short application, and then companies sort of apply to you. So it's really cool. If you haven't tried it out, go check it out. Uh, you can check out a link here. You can go to uh, hire.com forward slash simple programmer and, and they're offering to give you guys uh, a special bonus. So if you get a job with them, normally they give you like a thousand dollars. They're going to give you two thousand dollars. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get into the, uh, the question here. So how do you find your programming niche? In many places, you mentioned that every developer should find their niche to be a big fish in a small pond, as you call it. Personally, I find it particularly difficult to find one which is, one, which is on one side challenging enough and makes me passionate about, uh, while on the other side is a safe bet in terms of job market. Many people go into platforms which are better paid, but I find them boring after one or two years, uh, limiting creativity, and uh, your job ends up looking up things in the docs. <laughs> to, uh, I've been there twice, it's not for me. On the other hand, new technologies come and go very quickly, what makes it difficult to choose the right one uh, for some time? Uh, I'd be grateful to learn what your opinion on that. It could possibly be an inspiration for some training material, I suppose. I'm, uh, I, I'm not alone with such a dilemma. So I agree, you're not alone with such a dilemma here. This is a tough problem. So basically, you know, if I could summarize this, the question is, right, you understand the purpose of niching down. So we're not going to cover that in this video. Like I said, you can check out the playlist of specialization or you can check out my How to Market Yourself course to find out more about that. But so you understand why there's value in it, but you've got this dilemma of, okay, could, should you go into a platform that's you know, highly paid, that obviously is a good one to, to niche down in, but, um, but it's gonna be boring <laughs> in one or two years, right? So it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's lucrative to say it's stable, but it's boring, or do you niche down into a new technology? But that's like such a, a huge risk because uh, you know, they come and go very quickly and you wanna really invest in this. So here's the thing here. It's, you know, I don't want to say you can't go wrong because you, you could go wrong, but you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. You can't predict the future. You don't have a crystal ball. Most people, right? So, so let's, so one way to look at problems like this is to say, what would happen if I didn't do anything, right? It, because that's usually the worst case. If you decide to not niche down at all and you just were a generalist programmer, like maybe you are now, and you didn't pick a, a heavy specialty, you're just gonna get the results that you're currently getting, right? So if you wanna get better results, you're gonna have to do something. So then you have to wait and say, well, if I do something and I do the wrong thing, how, how traumatic, how bad will that action be? So let's say you pick the wrong niche. Let's say that a new programming language comes out and you're like, oh, I'm gonna totally go down that road and you make a blog and you spend all this time and then all, it, it flops and no one programs in that programming language anymore. How, what have you lost? You lost a little bit of time. Maybe you made some money. Maybe you actually built a reputation, right? Worst case scenario, none of that happened and it just flopped. And uh, I think worst case scenario, you would have gained some experience, right? <laughs> and, and it maybe had some fun if you, if you enjoy doing, you know, having fun with what you're doing, right? So worst case scenario is not really that bad. I mean, there's, so, so what, what, where I'm getting at with this is that I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict for you. Uh, you know, you're, you're gonna have to choose, right? If you want the 
stable path, right? And this is like the dilemma of life. It's not just specialty. If you want the stable path or what you perceive to be the stable path, sometimes that's, that's not always true, but maybe the, the easier, you know, perceived more stable path, then it's not going to be as lucrative. You're probably going to have to do a lot of hard work, right? It's going to be a little bit more boring, right? There's going to be a trade-off for the stable path, right? It, it may be, it may have a, a more guaranteed chance of making money, right? But, uh, but it's definitely not going to be like super lucrative and it's not going to be super exciting for the most part, right? If you choose the cutting edge, the new technology, right? To take the risk, uh, it's probably going to be exciting. <laughs> it's going to have a potential of being really lucrative or it's going to be zero. You're going to not make any money or you're going to waste some time, right? So you've got to kind of choose, right? And that's the, the trade-off in life. Now, personally, me, uh, you've got a lot of time, right? And you've got a lot of opportunities. You're going to fail a lot. So I used to be an extremely conservative person. I used to be very much looking for stability and trying to avoid risk and trying to you know, create this, this wall around myself, this fortress where I can't, where I'm impenetrable, where nothing can hurt me, nothing can harm me financially in my job and all this stuff. And, and I, you know, God forbid I should uh, have something bad happen, right? And what I found with that was that that, uh, that doesn't work. That limits you severely when, when you think in those terms, when you do things in those terms. And so it limits your, your joy in life. So I'd rather take big risks and go big. And if I fail, then I fail. And then I go on to the next thing and learn. And eventually I'm going to hit it. Eventually I'm going to gonna make my way. So that, that's my, my thought on it, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, I think, you know, you, you've got a, a problem here <laughs> um, and, and you're going to have to decide what is more important to you or what, what are you willing to do? You know, if you're at this point where you really want the stability, then hell, I mean, if you want the best thing, you know that picking a niche is, then maybe pick a stable technology and, you know, niche down into that and grind it out, even if it's boring to you. If you're willing to take some risks and being, having passion or something that's interesting to you is more important, then and maybe you know you take some risks like t take a shot at something new and and see what happens and and chances are you're not going to screw up as bad as what you think because either way you're probably going to be okay even if you pick the wrong technology and it goes out of style or something like that you're probably still going to gain experience you're probably still going to gain a following you probably can transition to somewhere else right it, it this is not a huge huge thing right if you make a mistake here and you specialize wrong there's ways that you can you know sort of sidestep out of it right you can you can sort of go on to the next thing or find something related right or you leverage what you've learned and gained from there it's not like this is a life or death situation right so anyway and i'll say one last thing Whatever you pick, it's eventually going to get boring and you're eventually going to lose a passion for it. That's just how it is. You're, there's going to be a grind. There's always a grind. So do not try to avoid the grind in life. Realize that the grind and just enjoy it, right? Just realize that this is part of it, that it's, you know, it's, it's fun to get the results, but you got to grind. Like everything that is, is worth doing is, is going to require this, this grind. It's a testing to, to see if you're worthy of the thing that you desire. So anyway, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to you next time. Take care.